Bonding is an informal term used in dentistry to describe the gluing procedure of ceramic and or plastic fillings. In contrast to the cementing process, surfaces to be glued must first undergo a special preparatory treatment. Let's take a look at the individual steps. Step 1. Etching the surfaces of restorations and or teeth. This etching process roughens the surface of the tooth and or the restoration, creating a so-called micro-retentive pattern. The animation shows the cross-section of a tooth while the etching gel is being applied. At first, the surface of the tooth is smooth. As time passes, the etching gel eats its way into the dental enamel and creates small lacunae and pores. These structures remain even after the etching gel is rinsed off. Let's assume that the initial surface of the tooth, including that of the inlay, amounts to a length of X. Examining the gluing surface closely after the etching procedure will reveal that this surface has expanded by a factor of Y. Because the etching pattern is three-dimensional, the gluing surface is actually enlarged more than what is observed. However, all parts of a tooth cannot be etched equally. In the animation, the dental enamel is being removed with a drill. Enamel is a mineral. Below the enamel, there is dentin. Dentin consists of protein strands and small channels. These structures are destroyed during the drilling procedure, literally forming a pulp that is technically termed as smear layer, represented by the gray mass in the animation. The smear layer prevents the glue from penetrating the dentin. In addition, if the etching gel were applied on the enamel and dentin for an equal amount of time, the proteins released in the dentin would form small lumps because of the etching gel. This is called denaturation and is similar to chicken soup when it begins to boil. The gray film forming on the surface is made up of denatured proteins. Again, the glue isn't able to penetrate the dentin. This is why the etching gel is applied to the enamel first, followed by an application to the dentin after some time. Furthermore, it's allowed to remain on the dentin for only a few seconds. Not only does this remove the smear layer without denaturing the dentinal proteins, it also creates the desired micro-retentive pattern in the enamel. This is the basis for an optimal bond. Step 2. A primer, shown here in violet, is used to remove water from the dentin in order to dry out the protein strands because water prevents the glue from distributing well within the dentin. Step 3. Although the protein strands are dry, they have collapsed. An adhesive is used at this point to make the protein strands stand up again, thereby promoting distribution of the glue. In Step 4, the bonding agent is the pre-glue. Because it's very thin, it penetrates deeply into the cleaned and re-established protein strands, as well as into the vacuoles or pores of the dentin. Finally, the actual glue is applied. Although this is only a rough outline, it's clear that the gluing of dental fillings is an elaborate process. Good bonding results can be achieved only if the manufacturer's instructions are followed and the tooth is kept clean throughout the procedure. This is why dentists always work with a rubber dam. The animation demonstrates what can happen if saliva and or blood come in contact with the tooth. The porous surface is immediately closed and the glue, here in green, can no longer penetrate the structures created earlier. Furthermore, the adhesion and tightness of the fillings and inlay are greatly reduced. Well-glued ceramic inlays cannot be recognized even by a dentist. The risks of bonding are negligible. Nevertheless, complications may occur in individual cases, possibly requiring additional measures. Every additional measure may in turn lead to complications, which may lead to tooth loss. At this point, we will only discuss the specific complications encountered with bonding, which include the following. Sensitive tooth necks. Toothache, which for example may be caused by injury to the dental nerve. Leaking ceramic fillings or plastic fillings. Clogging of gaps between teeth and gum inflammation, which, for example, may be caused by residual glue.